Ready? Okay, we will call the meeting to order of February 18, 2021, and we'll start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Luke, Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Olivia Trujillo? Here. Bob Smith? I'm here. Nicholas Lucinovich? Present. Veronica Vasquez? John Crum? Here. Sally Gonzalez? Kyle Blake? Present. Kathy Prout? Yes. Rachel Cryer? Here. Philip Smith? Here. Alex Garcia? Present. David Couch? Here. Zach Stridman? Cindy Parr? I'm here. John Kersey? Here. Michael Navarro? Here. And Zanae Alcala? Oh. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Okay, thank you. Uh, public comment. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the council on any matter not on this agenda, but under the jurisdiction of the council. Council members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask me questions for clarification. Make a referral to staff for factual information or request staff to report back to the council on a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Do we have any public comments? No, we don't, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Consent agenda opportunity for public comment. Are there any public comments for the consent agenda? Seeing none, I have a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Roll call vote. Olivia Trujillo. Yes. Bob Smith. Yes. Nicholas Lucinovich? Yes. John Trump? Yes. Kyle Blake? Aye. Kathy Crow? Yes. Orso Cryer? Yes. Philip Smith? Yes. Alex Garcia? Aye. David Couch? Yes. Cindy Parra? Yes. John Kersey? Yes. Michael Navarro? Yes. Thank you. Madam Clerk, this is Scrivener. I'm on. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor. Did, did you catch that, Mr. Chairman? Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Item four, phase one of current area regional goods movement operations sustainability study. Mr. Ball. Thank you, Chair and uh, committee members. Uh, if everyone can hear me all right, uh, uh, direct your attention to your screens. I'm sharing my uh, PowerPoint presentation. I have a few slides on this. Uh, this item is a final report for the phase one cargo study. Uh, the action is to receive and file. And so before you receive and file it, we thought we'd just give you a, a quick highlight of, uh, of what this study contained. Uh, the uh, current area regional goods movement operations strategy or sustainability study is uh, uh, affectionately called the cargo study. Uh, we uh, uh, embarked upon this process at roughly the same time the AB 617 outreach process was beginning in the city of Shafter. 
And so we leveraged uh, some of the input from that process, particularly looking at ways to redirect goods movement around uh, existing communities and populated areas and disadvantaged communities. And so uh, since we've been working on that, uh, uh, in the city of Shafter and the wonderful industrial park, uh, you guys I'm sure have heard about the Walmart uh, grocery distribution center that's uh, been up there. Uh, today, a second uh, Amazon distribution uh, center was announced to uh, uh, be opening up in Shafter, uh, as well as the uh, one that is uh, over by the airport, uh, uh, the one by the airport, the Amazon facility, is one of only three that size. Well, there's one uh, here on where the West Coast one uh, for these uh, small sort distribution centers of that type. Uh, there's one in the Midwest uh, uh, up in, and then another one that's over on the uh, East Coast in North Carolina uh, near Raleigh. It's interesting that uh, Walmart's grocery distribution center and uh, this uh, small sort distribution center for Amazon uh, on the East Coast are both in Raleigh. On the West Coast, they're both here in, in, in the Bakersfield Shafter area. And so um, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the importance of goods movement is reflected in our regional transportation plan. If you uh, ever get a chance to dig into that, uh, uh, the first strategy that we deal with uh, is uh, goods movement. It's uh, one of the key things to keeping our economy rolling within the region. <clears throat> in the uh, study, one of the first things we wanted to look at was uh, uh, more efficient distribution by rail. And in a recent study completed for the San Joaquin Valley, uh, uh, led in part by the San Joaquin Valley Air District, uh, uh, shipping goods by rail can result in a 93% reduction in CO2 emissions, an 84% reduction in NOx, and a 70% reduction in particulate matter uh, in this scenario of, a, um, uh, of creating sort of an inland port uh, within the San Joaquin Valley. And uh, so, so uh, a tremendous potential savings since uh, uh, roughly 40% of the emissions depending on what you're looking at, uh, are coming from trucks on the roads. Uh, but rail is, uh, is a difficult proposition. Uh, uh, railroads don't like to ship less than 700 miles or so, and the state of California is 700 miles long, so shipping out of state is doable, but shipping within the state, is, particularly to the ports, is more difficult. However, there is one goods movement uh, that's already happening over in East Kern at the Rio Tinto facility. They have a, a unit train per day that goes down to the port of LA Long Beach. Uh, they're also um, uh, coordinating, I think, with the uh, uh, over at, um, uh, at Trona uh, with a, a, a similar type of unit train. These are bulk haulers of uh, goods that go there. Uh, if we could get, uh, say, containerized movement or goods movement coming from the San Joaquin Valley, uh, uh, say from the shaft area, it might be able to hook up with one of those trains on a daily basis and get down into the ports and not create any increased congestion on that highly congested corridor through the Cone Pass or going down uh, uh, to the port of LA Long Beach. Um, uh, 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 further, if you could connect the rest of the San Joaquin Valley uh, to that uh, to that service, that might be uh, helpful. It's interesting that the high-speed rails uh, early construction segment between Merced and Shafter will actually remove um, uh, 14 train slots or empty 14 train slots per day on the BNSF greatly freeing up additional uh, uh, goods movement or uh, allowing for additional capacity for goods movement uh, within the San Joaquin Valley. And uh, probably even more uh, significant is uh, maybe even connecting all the way up to the port and you might be able to see some sort of train system that might be able to go back and forth uh, connecting to those two locations. This uh, valley study uh, uh, found the greatest potential uh, in the uh, northern end of the valley. We'll talk a little bit more about that. 
uh, local uh, in our region, uh, the, our study looked specifically at increased employment at the wonderful industrial park where that new Amazon was announced today around the airport and, and up on Laredo Highway. And you can see the brown areas on this map are um, uh, regions uh, within our area that are um, that have a high uh, uh, expectation for future growth and employment. The, the darkest regions are uh, uh, over 100 percent or a doubling of the uh, employment in those in those areas. Uh, in our transportation modeling, we found uh, two alternatives that uh, looked very promising. And one of them is an extension of Cherry Avenue up to Merced Avenue, which would relieve uh, uh, one of the pinch points, uh, a bottlenecks within the system, which is 7th Standard and Freeway 99. That interchange there in the future just gets worse and worse and worse in the, in the travel modeling. And uh, uh, maybe a little bit longer term, this alternative seven that would connect uh, those areas uh, via seven standard road over to I-5 and 43 over to I-5, kind of diverting the truck traffic away from the populated centers in metropolitan Bakersfield, as well as uh, uh, in and around Shafter. Uh, the um, uh, another, our purpose of the study was to look at our circulation elements. And uh, you may be aware that the uh, high-speed rail goes right through the middle of this area. And when it did, it really disrupted the circulation element plans uh, within this area. And so uh, the consultant spent a considerable amount of time redirecting and finding ways to get around and through that high-speed rail corridor uh, and uh, making uh, potential connections uh, to these hubs. Uh, again, the, the, uh, one of the primary purposes is to create sort of a series of goods movement spokes uh, that would, uh, through our circulation plan, route this extra truck, truck traffic, not just down 99, uh, but uh, around the metropolitan Bakersfield area and, and away from that. Um, uh, the uh, consultant came up with uh, some innovative ideas. One of the sub-consultants uh, is uh, GLD Partners, and uh, they are working with uh, companies uh, up in the Bay Area uh, that are tech logistics companies that are looking at autonomous truck uh, technology, and they're looking for places where they can ship or haul goods uh, from warehouse to warehouse. And in uh, discussions with the wonderful company, there is a potential uh, goods movement between the wonderful industrial park in Shafter and the uh, uh, their wonderful nuts and pistachios facility out by Lost Hills that might make an, an ideal first place to look at that. And if you look at that corridor going out Seven Standard Road, it really doesn't pass any um, uh, uh, populated areas and might be an ideal location for testing uh, this new emerging autonomous truck technology. If you notice these maps, it's got the different squares on it. The larger the squares, the greater the amount of square footage. Uh, it's already out of date because we just got another million square feet uh, from, uh, uh, from Amazon here. Uh, so uh, connecting these in a way that would divert goods movement around our major urban and populated uh, areas, as well as the smaller disadvantaged communities, but still provide that connectivity is uh, uh, something that uh, we put together in what we call a proposed safe tech logistics zone or corridor network and uh, uh, need, needing to do improvements along those, uh, but also uh, special signage that, that would allow for safety. Uh, this is just a potential uh, uh, suggested um, uh, strategy to try and in, uh, uh, encourage this type of uh, of goods movement within our regions. These would be high, high paying tech jobs within this region. Uh, we're also working on an I-5 uh, uh, zero emission study and looking at how we can improve I-5. And a lot of these, this autonomous technology 
uh, is likely to be low or zero emission technology. And again, getting back to our core areas of trying to mitigate and reduce the impacts of our, of our communities uh, uh, through uh, this type of technology. Uh, up and down I-5, connecting at the uh, Tahoe Ranch Commerce Center at the base of the grapevine. Uh, this technology probably isn't uh, able to go down into LA, so any uh, connection at the Tahoe Ranch would probably then uh, get a, uh, a fully um, uh, drivered cab that would then pick up the load and take it the rest of the way down into LA. Uh, then there's also the potential for a connection over to uh, the um, uh, Rio Tinto facility and, and uh, the uh, potential to uh, connect by rail down the port of LA Long Beach is something else that, uh, uh, that we may look. This is a more detailed look at some of that network. And again, this is very draft. Uh, uh, it's the first look. And I mentioned this is the phase one cargo study. Phase two uh, would look at this a little more in detail and see how we could go about uh, funding this and partnering with uh, uh, with some of these tech companies that are looking into this. You'll notice that um, we've tried to connect all of the region's communities, you know, from Delano and McFarland. Uh, uh, there's some significant potential uh, for goods movement opportunities up in there, down to Arvin and over into East Kern, up, uh, even up to Ridgecrest. Uh, uh, and uh, our region is ideally suited for this. If you think about it, the, um, uh, the drone technology was pioneered in Eastern Kern out at Edwards Air Force Base. And uh, Rio Tinto, around the world, they're already operating these autonomous haulers, uh, uh, off-road haulers for, uh, uh, for the mining, uh, the open pit mining activities that they're doing there. And so uh, uh, taking this technology the next step, uh, at the Hyundai test track, at the uh, Honda test track, maybe leasing uh, Willow Springs or um, uh, uh, Button Willow or the Kern Raceway to, uh, again, tech, uh, you know, these, these are opportunities. Probably one of the best opportunities that we have here uh, within Kern is our dairies and the ability, uh, these are daily shipments from the dairies, trucks that are going to the dairy processing facilities, uh, some of them up in Tulare County. And, and just back and forth on those rural roads that are outside the urban areas is, uh, has tremendous potential. And again, it brings this opportunity to bring in high tech jobs within our region, uh, as well as uh, in, improving our air. Uh, a lot of people that think that the autonomous tre technology is safer uh, than, uh, uh, than, than regular drivers. It's less prone to, uh, uh, to accidents. Uh, uh, and uh, by uh, not having the driver, that actually lowers shipping costs. And when you lower the shipping cost uh, of, uh, of a facility, uh, of a truck, it allows us to uh, look at ways to maybe charge that truck on a per mile basis through a mobility fee. And that mobility fee could then be used to help maintain the road. And uh, so uh, working that out, I think, is one of the key issues that uh, phase two and phase three will be dealing with. So uh, uh, this is it. Uh, we're planning on uh, this clean tech incentive fee structure uh, for early adopters in our phase two study. We're going to look more at that in, in the mobility fee. Also, uh, see if we can even create a way to incentivize a freight modal shift to encourage uh, more shipment by rail uh, because of the uh, uh, benefits, uh, not only for air quality and energy use, but also for uh, uh, reduced wear and tear on the roads, uh, as well as regional warehousing impact fees. There'll be a nexus study related to that, uh, uh, other, other potential fees, and to uh, uh, help minimize and reduce the impacts while maximizing the potential benefits of this new technology for our region. Uh, so that's it for my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions related to it. Uh, uh, the item action is to uh, accept, receive, and file the uh, the uh, study. Thank you, Mr. Ball. Lots of interesting options. Not sure which uh, direction we go. I, I'd like the real Tinto option where we can actually get some trains going down the port and back to us. That would be great. Any comments from Members. Seeing none, can I have a motion? 
time we were through. Er, we have to file. Receiving file. Voice vote. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passed. Motion passed. Thank you. Thank you. And five, Highway Infrastructure Program status update, Ms. Pacheco. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Kern Clock staff prepared a summary of Highway Infrastructure Program projects obligated to date, as well as Highway Infrastructure Program projects program but not yet obligated. This was done in preparation for potential future highway infrastructure program funding that may soon be available to the Kern region. While Kern Cog has not yet received official documentation from Caltrans on the total amount of funds available, the Transportation Technical Advisory Committee recommends the funding be used for option one, First, divert $106,095 of funding that comes in to fulfilling the HIP program. This amount is subject to change due to obligations, de-obligations, and projects not delivered. Option two, then divert the remaining funds to two regional projects. Environmental phase of the State Route 58 Truck Climbing Lanes Project and the right-of-way phase of the Hageman flyover project. Kern Cog staff supports the Transportation Technical Advisory Committee recommendation with the added clarification to split the funding evenly between the regional projects in option two. The action requested is that the Transportation Planning Policy Committee approve option one and option two with the funding split evenly between the regional projects. Thank you, Ms. Pacheco. Any comments? Any none? Can I have a motion? Uh, this is Phil in Tehachapi. I think it's a good opportunity uh, for the truck climbing link project to get some traction, if you will. Uh, that uh, that funding for the uh, environmental phase is, is critical just to move on to the next area. So I'm all in favor of this. It is a regional uh, project. And anytime we can get extra funding for something like that, it's well worth it. And if there is no other comment, I would uh, make the motion to approve on staff's recommendation. Thank you. Scribner, second. Thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Show that the motion carried with the voice vote. Thank you. Thank you. Caltrans report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Michael Navarro with Caltrans. Um, good evening, to everybody. A couple updates before I go into my project updates. So, one thing we're looking at, consistent with a lot of the, you know, the items that Mr. Ball presented as far as goods movement, we are planning for the spring a State Route 99 summit throughout the valley. So we are engaging our valley partners uh, tomorrow in a meeting with our, our MPO partners, as well as some other stakeholders to start what we're calling a visioning session, start planning for this summit. So there'll be more to follow on that, but we do envision a much larger summit in the spring where we include you know, elected officials and our various stakeholders to kind of shape the vision for what 99 could look like for accommodating goods movement, parallel facilities, as Mr. Ball touched, about, touched upon, rail, et cetera. So more to follow on that as we come. Uh, also announced at USDOT, they did uh, put out a notice of funding opportunity for their infra grants. So they'll be having some webinars uh, February 22nd and, and March 1st as far as how to apply, as well as a webinar on February 24th for their uh, for the benefit cost analysis. And deadlines for those applications are March 19th. There's $889 million available. I do want to thank those of you who, who did apply for, for the Caltrans planning grant. Those applications were due last week. Um, so far, we received about 14, I believe, here in our district, with about three of those coming from Kern County. So best of luck of that, and then we'll start reviews here shortly and provide some updates in, in the upcoming months. As for projects, the Cash Creek Bridge Replacement Project, which replaces the bridge on State Route 58 uh, east of the Hatchby, that project didn't close out, so I'll be removing that from the project updates. Uh, the Gap Closure Rehab Project on State Route 58, this is a rehabilitation project from 
They're up 58.99 separation to Cottonwood Road. So the work schedule for February is along the eastbound lanes. Um, all lanes are open in the eastbound direction. And along the westbound lanes, there's smooth activities and corrections occurring. Westbound lanes have all three lanes open from Cottonwood Road to South 8th Street. And then from South 8th Street to the connector, two lanes are open to traffic. We anticipate this project being complete uh, July of this year. Uh, Bell Terrace Overcrossing, stay route 58, constructing auxiliary lane. Current schedule is to complete that project by the end of this month. Currently, uh, CRCP construction is ongoing for the auxiliary lane, and the median sign structure and the sign for Bell Terrace Bridge has been installed. Bakersfield Freeway Connector uh, is modifying the stair on 9958 interchange. Work is progressing on this project. Um, various work is occurring on the sound walls and the drainage system. Is being constructed is currently being constructed throughout the project. Um, the temporary detour ramp for westbound 58 to, to southbound State Route 99 traffic will begin construction the latter half of this month. The uh, State Route 99 to our fast freight cord corridor project was I-5 to US 99. Uh, we've completed construction on what we call Stage 8, which consisted of Lane 2 reconstruction of the project with new CRCP. We have restriped to the original configuration and opened all three lanes. We've also restriped throughout the project where it was in its temporary configuration to close lane two so they can be demolished or reconstructed with CRCP as well. Palm Avenue overcrossing to Beardsley Canal Bridge, South State Route 99. Uh, there's a tentative traffic switch to Southbound State Route 99, lane one, which we switched to the bypass lane at Northbound 99 on March 8th. This project will continue to progress on, on several items, and we anticipate to close this project out September 2021. Uh, the State Route 223 Derby Signal Project is a safety project at the east end of the city of Arvin. This project was awarded, and we anticipate construction starting uh, July of this year. And lastly, the State Route 184 Sunset Roundabout Project. Uh, this project is at the intersection of State Route 184 and Sunset near Weed Patch. Uh, this project will install a roundabout. This project is ready to advertise. We're currently waiting on PG&E to complete their transmission line relocation before advertising. Uh, we expect them to complete this by July, and at that point, we'll be able to advertise. With that, I thank you. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have for me. Thank you. Any questions? Hearing none, District 9. I think you're muted. No, we're not here. We can't hear you today. <laughs> Her face is not all. Volume up, maybe. Well, look. Yeah, we can try and come back. Uh, Executive Director's report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. Uh, before I get started, I want to recognize Maria Perez, who's on representing McFarland. Welcome. Uh, I have a handful of items for this agenda. Uh, this California Transportation Commission met um, January 27th, 28th. A few highlights that will directly affect us. We've kicked off the um, STIP process. That's a process that happens every two years where they um, distribute money to the regions. This will be the first uh, cycle post-COVID, and we will have to make adjustments to, uh, to people driving less and buying less diesel and gasoline. So we'll see how that plays out, and if um, the stimulus that we talked about a few minutes ago um, is used to augment the, the Step, or if it is used to augment the shop, or if it is passed through to regions like us. All three of those options are currently on the table. 
CTC also uh, adopted an equity statement um, similar to the one that uh, Caltrans adopted. That's something we need to watch and they've, uh, they've told us that all their funding will be subject to an equitable distribution in the future. CTC is also scheduled to meet March 24th and 25th. At that, at that meeting, we're likely um, to receive guidance on the stimulus that was signed by former President Trump on the 27th. So by then, we should know if, if we are getting any of that. Uh, during the past month, I've attended cargo meetings um, about the study that Mr. Ball covered, I talked about um, potentially um, some new on and off ramps on Highway 99 in the vicinity of Truxton that will would, uh, would complete the two missing movements um, that are being constructed right now for Centennial Corridor. We've also met on progress on State Route 46. We are continuing to make big progress on that project and we may actually have a formal ribbon cutting, I'm sorry, a form, formal groundbreaking on that project in the April time frame. We've also uh, had several discussions about trucks for climbing lanes on Route 58 with District 9 and uh, the Big, Greater Bakersfield Chamber has met and we participated in a market assessment briefing. Subject to any of your questions, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you. Any questions for the Director? Hearing none, we will adjourn that meeting and move to the Senate to COG meeting. Uh, same roll call with the addition of Supervisor Scribner, who joined some time ago. Uh, public comments remain the same. Do we have any public comments? We have none, so we'll move to the consent calendar. Anybody wish to pull anything off consent calendar? Can I have a motion? Motion to approve. Motion to approve consent. This is Phil. Second. Roll call vote, please. Well, let me get you here. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Nicholas is Yes. John Crump? Yes. Kyle Blake? Aye. Kathy Crow? Yes. Corshall Cryer? Yes. Philip Smith? Yes. Alex Garcia? Aye. David Couch? Yes. And Zach Scribbin? Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Executive Director's Report. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Mark Heckman is on the line and I believe he's connected and he can give uh, District 9 uh, for Eastern Current comments if you'd like to hear those. Well, that'd be great, thank you. Mark, can you yeah, thank you. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we hear you. All right, excellent. Sorry about Danae's connection, so let me take over for uh, quickly running through the District 9 report, I want to say that it looks like we have energized the following locations, which are at the Boron Rest Area. That would be for the ZEV project. So if you have an electric car, you can charge it there. Um, probably the biggest thing we're working on, we just announced, this is sort of Ridgecrest-centric. Uh, we have opened up for comments our project which is the which is the Inyo Kern pavement project uh, the PID is out for comments so we can send you the link and you can uh, look at that and comment on it uh, also we're collaborating with our local partners and our maintenance supervisors in Kern County to streamline communications during our weather events um, hopefully this year will be better than last. Um, also, we had a number of semi, several semi blowovers on State Route 14 over the weekend, and we have guidelines on highway closures due to wind events. So 
we're looking at doing a department policy. Um, also, not sure if you uh, know this, but our quarterly report has been updated for all of our projects in Kern County. So you can go online and look at that. Um, what else do we have here? And um, I think that's about it for now. Uh, I'm just doing this really quick. Sorry for the lack of preparation. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you. Can I, can you, uh, any chance you can hear me now? Yeah. yeah, we can hear you, Danae. Yay, thank you. I apologize. My apologies, Chair and Committee members. Uh, one thing to add to what Mark um, offered up, I just uh, received information late this afternoon that the switch on the Rosamond Mojave rehab project did occur this afternoon. Um, after a little delay yesterday with some armor guard uh, that didn't get in in time. So all southbound traffic is now switching over to that inside lane on the northbound side, which obviously affects the on and off ramps at Dawn Road, Bacchus Road, and Silver Queen Road. So um, diligence and precautions out there as, a, as the switchover has occurred and um, carrying up the southbound side will now begin. Oh, thank you very much. And if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you. Oh, um, Hi, this, is, this is Phil in Tehachapi. And I had a question regarding, so the the striping on the north side of, of which is the northbound the traffic there, is a, there's two, it's not a double line because it's quite a ways apart. Uh, so is that where all the traffic is going to be separated by the two yellow lines? It's very confusing at the moment, or it was last weekend. Okay. Um, I'm not exactly sure. I also uh, sent out a um, link to um, to Kern Cog staff earlier, along with the, the planning document Mark was talking about for Ridgecrest and Inyo Kern. Anyway, there's a YouTube video. Our public information office uh, enjoys putting out videos on these things. So maybe take a look at that. But hopefully, um, any confusion with striping will no longer be there. There should be a hard median dividing north and southbound lanes out there on the northbound side. So that's what will be uh, bisecting the lanes of travel. If that's what you're referring to, or was I mistaken? Yeah, there's the there's a median there now, but uh, I was just curious because on on the right side, the northbound looks like you have two travel lanes, uh, mm -hmm. but people are confused because the distance between the double line is about six feet instead of oh. a, okay instead of six instead of six inches apart, the double line is six feet apart maybe unless that's travel down. I'll have to go and look next time I'm over there. Interesting. Okay, I will also get in touch with our resident engineer out there just to see if I can get some further clarification. And maybe that has changed since uh, last time you were there, but um, I will confirm as well and we'll see what's going on out there. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. Any other questions for Caltrans? Um, I just wanted to respond to Joe. He um, asked what a PID was, and that would be a project initiation document. It actually becomes our programming document for the project. So we're doing some uh, pre-planning comments on the Inyo Kern pavement project. Also, I attached in the chat our comment link to that document so if you want it you can take a look thank you thank you thank you mark any questions hearing none the executive director's report good evening again mr chairman two quick items on this agenda uh, march 3rd um, we will be doing Valley Voice uh, electronically via Zoom this year. March 3rd is day one. March 10th is day two. If you've never participated in this before, since this is being done over Zoom, you're free to join us. And if you want more information, um, please, please contact me directly. 
also a reminder, you're, you're all, you all have to do your Form 700s for your individual jurisdictions. You also have to do one for us. It can contain the same information. All you have to do is change the, uh, change the organization and put a, a fresh signature on it. In your folder this evening is an article, uh, okay, quite a bit of text, both in Bakersfield and in the Antelope Valley about um, our regional planning survey, looking into um, granny flats or ADUs or mother-in-law units, all called various. Uh, I've gotten literally over a dozen calls about that and uh, we generated two articles. So. It was, it was nice to see, and uh, I believe at least one of the uh, one board member was interviewed for that. Also, an article on Centennial Corridor in Metropolitan Bakersfield. If you haven't had the time to drive through that project, uh, literally several hundred million dollars of construction going on. Uh, it's a culmination of well over 30 years of of, of, of work. It's a very interesting project, and. Um, if you have time, take a drive through. It will be done in about a year and a half. Schedule of cash disbursements for January. Timeline covering February to May. And subject to any of your questions, Mr. Chair or board members, that concludes my report. Thank you. Do we have any questions for the director? Hearing none, do we have any member statements? Hearing none, we are adjourned. Oh. <laughs> Thank you all.